It's lunch hour here in Midtown Manhattan. There's cream cheese in here? Yes. And for the lactose tolerant, there's plenty of cheese to choose from. But where did all this gorgonzola and gruyere come from? To find out how cheese is really made, we visited Trent Hendricks. He runs Hendricks Farms and Dairy in Telford, Pennsylvania, just north of Philadelphia. You can never make good cheese from bad milk, but you can make bad cheese from good milk. That makes the milking process very important. The astronaut is a robotic cow milker. Each cow has a collar on uh, with a, a passive uh, electronic device that is only read when the cows come in. There's two brushes that spin against each other that have been disinfected. Based off of the memory of where the cow's teats were on the previous milking, it'll wash that. It swings out of the way and the lasers come on. It takes a 3D scan of the bottom of the cow. And every time that cow comes in, it adds to a data bank on that cow. Then it begins milking each teat separately. The milk goes through the MQC, Milk Quality Control Center, and it can identify impurities in the milk. You could buy a nice condo in most cities around the country for what the price of one robotic milker costs. Hendricks raises Ayrshire cows. He says their milk has consistently smaller fat globules compared to other breeds, and that makes for better cheese. Once the Ayrshires have been milked, the cheese making begins. Today, Hendricks is making a hybrid he calls Cheddar Blue. The temperature of Cheddar Blue to start needs to be 88 degrees. So all of our cheeses are raw milk cheeses. They're not heated above the body temperature of a cow. Next step is adding the mold. The uh, mold that we use for the Cheddar Blue is Penicillium Rook 40 Blue 6. The mold eats the lactose or milk sugar, yum, and spits out lactic acid which curdles the milk. And then we'll introduce calf rennet. Which is an enzyme found in cow's stomachs that also helps curdle milk. For this cheese, we go to 101 degrees, and it'll hit temperature, and we'll stop heating it, we'll stop stirring it, and we'll just let the curds settle to the bottom. What are the curds? The curds are the casein proteins surrounded by a layer of fat. What's the whey again? Whey is water and the whey proteins and any excess fat that have not been used for curd formation. Back to the cheese room. And at this time we'll do a texture test which basically is you grab a handful of curd and you squeeze it into a tight little ball and then you take your thumb and you try to break it up and the ball needs to squeeze together and hold but when you take your thumb it needs to break back into curds again. Another 15-20 minutes or so this will just flake apart. It'll, it'll look like this. I'll be able to just break it up and this is what it should look like when it breaks up again. When that happens, you're at the right texture. And then we drain the whey off. In most cheeses, the curds are packed into molds and then dunked in a salt bath. Cheddar, on the other hand, is slightly different. We drain the whey off and the curds are piled up into form slabs. The slabs are cut, stacked, and flipped every 15 minutes for approximately an hour. This expels more whey, you know, creating a thicker, denser cheese. It also, the pH does drop a little bit more, but it's mostly about texture. It's called the cheddaring process, as hence the name cheddar. Next, they grind the cheese and salt the curds. And we take those salted curds and put them in the press, press and develop shape. Our cheddar blue is ready to eat at about four to six months of age. Aging cheese, like aging meat or anything else, is controlled rot. Ew. Any open surface will grow the mold on it because the mold is in the milk. That's how the rind on Cheddar Blue forms. It's the mold in the milk growing in the presence of oxygen. In blue cheeses that have mold on the inside of the cheese, you have to expose the middle of the cheese to air. The cheese is veined because it's been pierced with like a stainless steel needle and the mold grows wherever there's air. So you create a little channel, a little tunnel of air to get in there and then you have the blue mold and of course if there's any caverns uh, within the cheese, those will mold out as well. Hendrick says there's an art to cheese molding. Actually, there's two primary styles of blue mold. 
one is blue and one is actually green and for our goat cheeses I'll use the blue version because the goat milk is very very white uh, whereas the cow milk tends to be a creamier uh, slightly yellowish color to the milk and I think the green stands up nicer it tastes the same it's just the tint on the uh, the actual mold itself so we call it cheddar blue but in reality, it looks green to me. Hendrick's cheese sensibility has won him accolades. As much as I would like to claim all of the credit for it, <laughs> the fact of the matter is, I just teach milk how to become cheese. And that's what this is. This is really, really good milk preserved.